Kia ora team, welcome to the 2.5 Genetic Variation and Change 4 Credit External video series. This is video 1. In this video you'll be learning about DNA structure and chromosome structure. And by the end of this video you should be able to describe the general structure of DNA, describe chromosome structure in terms of sister chromatids and homologous pairs, and describe chromosome number in terms of haploid and diploid cells. So deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA for short, is the chemical molecule involved in passing on genetic information from one generation to the next. Structurally, this DNA consists of two strands of alternating sugar and phosphate units wound around each other in a double helix. So this red ribbon here represents the sugar phosphate backbone on the left hand side and the blue ribbon here represents the sugar phosphate backbone on the right hand side. Connecting the two strands, like rungs of a ladder, are hydrogen bonds, these lines here, between the bases. And these bases come in pairs. DNA is also said to be anti-parallel, which means that the two strands of DNA run in opposite directions. So this strand here runs in the five prime to 3 prime direction, whereas this strand here runs in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction. In this strand, the pentagons are pointing the right side up, but in this strand, the pentagon is pointing with the pointed side down. That's how we know they're running in opposite directions. There are four types of bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Adenine is symbolized by an A, and it only forms hydrogen bonds with thymine. Cytosine is represented by a C, and it only forms hydrogen bonds with guanine, which is symbolized by a G. This base pairing rule is called the complementary base pairing rule, and it always applies in DNA. If you're wondering what 3' prime and 5' prime means, it is referring to a certain carbon on the deoxyribose sugar. This is just for interest and will never be examined. It's just for people who are curious. So the deoxyribose sugar, which is this pentagon here, is made up of five carbons, and each carbon is designated a number. So this carbon is designated number one, two, three, four, and there's a carbon here, not the circle, but this, um, the end of the stick is number five. So in this picture, this nucleotide is going from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Here's another picture showing DNA. DNA is a polymer because it's made up of many monomers. The monomers being this nucleotide, and in this case we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pairs of nucleotides in this DNA polymer. Just in case you didn't know, mono means one, so one unit. And poly means many, many units. The DNA in all of your cells is approximately 2 meters long. Because it's very, very long, it needs to be neatly packaged into either chromatin or chromosomes, which are then stored safely in the nucleus of cells. To package DNA, it is neatly wrapped around proteins called histones. If it's loosely packed, then the DNA is in the form of chromatin. DNA needs to be loosely packed if proteins need to come in to read the DNA or replicate the DNA during DNA replication. If DNA is tightly packed, then the DNA is in the form of chromosomes. DNA needs to be very tightly packed if the cell is undergoing cell division either by mitosis or meiosis. Otherwise, long strands of chromatin could get tangled and even broken. So this picture here clearly shows the relationship between DNA, chromatin, and chromosomes. Here's the DNA molecule, and to start packaging it, it's wound around histones. And then the histones are kind of like wound around each other to form this loosely packed structure called chromatin. And then this chromatin is further wound around each other to form this very, very tightly packed structure called a chromosome. 
In the 2.4 externa, which we've already covered, you learned about how DNA replication happens before mitosis. During DNA replication, DNA is in a chromatin state, so it's in this kind of um, state, it's loosely packaged. After DNA replication, chromatin condenses or it becomes more tightly packed to form chromosomes, so this very tightly packed structure there. When DNA is in the chromosome form, the sister chromatids are much easier to see. Sister chromatids are identical copies of DNA that's created after DNA replication. One of the sister chromatids was the original copy and the other sister chromatid was the product of DNA replication. And these two sister chromatids are joined by a centromere here. Here's another picture showing the difference between chromosome and chromatids. So a chromatid is one of these long strands. These two long strands are 100% identical to each other. They are joined at the center by a centromere. But we call this whole thing a chromosome. At some point during cell division, the two strands separate. And once they become separated, then they're each called a chromosome. But when they're together, bound by a centromere, then the whole structure is called the chromosome. Here's a picture that shows how chromatin is longer and starts off with just one copy. Then as cells get ready to divide, DNA replication happens and one chromatin becomes two chromatin. We can also call it two chromatids at this point because they're identical copies of each other and they're bound together by the centromere. Then just before cell division begins, the DNA condenses. It becomes more tightly packed, and at this point, we call it a chromosome. Now we're going to learn about a new term, homologous pairs. Chromosomes come in pairs, and these pairs are called homologous pairs. The homologous pairs look similar because they're the same length and have the same centromere position. And sometimes you can see that they have the same banding patterns, but you can't see that in this picture. However, homologous chromosomes are not identical because they may carry different versions of those genes. This is because one homolog, one chromosome from this homologous pair comes from mum and one homolog comes from dad. So for example, let's say these chromosomes carry the gene for eye color and hair color. You may inherit your mom's genes for eye color and hair color through the green homolog, and you inherit your dad's genes for eye color and hair color through the purple homolog. Mom's eye and hair color can be different from dad's hair and eye color. So you're inheriting eye and hair color genes from both parents, but you may inherit different versions of them. For example, your mom could have blonde hair, but your dad could have brown hair. Homologous pairs are different from sister chromatids. Sister chromatids here, but these two are homologous pairs. Because homologous pairs, green and purple, are not identical. Whereas sister chromatids, green and green, are identical. Each homolog in the homologous pair, green versus purple, come from either mom or dad while sister chromatids are the result of DNA replication. Green and green result from replication. It's extremely important for you to understand the difference between homologous pairs of chromosomes and sister chromatids, especially for when we discuss the stages of meiosis. We've talked about chromosome structure, now let's talk about chromosome number. The number of chromosomes a cell has depends on two things what species the cell comes from, and whether it's a somatic cell, so a normal body cell, or a gamete, a sex cell. This is because different species have different numbers of chromosomes as shown in this table. And gametes always have half the number of chromosomes than somatic cells. In total, human somatic cells, so human normal body cells, have 46 chromosomes. But you need to understand that of these 46 chromosomes, 
there are only 23 types of chromosomes known as homologous pairs, meaning that there are two non-identical chromosomes for each type, one from mum and one from dad. So if we have a look at this picture here, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. So 1, 22, 23. And you'll see that, they, uh, that there are two of this type, one from mum, one from dad. There's two of this type of chromosome, one from mum, one from dad, right up to this one. There are two of this type of chromosome, one from mum and one from dad. They contain the same genes. So of type 22 chromosomes, they each have the same genes in them and they each have the same banding. So there's green top, green top, um, orange bottom, orange bottom. If you look at chromosome one, there's two chromosomes in this type of chromosome. And you can see that the banding patterns are the same, they're the same length, and that the centromere would be in the same spot. Pick any other chromosome and you'll see the same patterns. So you'll see that they have the same banding. So green, um, purple, green, and an orange tinge. They're the same length and they will contain the same genes. But even if they contain the same genes, so let's say chromosome 11 has um, the eye color in it, those genes may be different versions. So for example, this chromosome from mum may have the blonde hair version, whereas this chromosome from dad may have the brown hair version. We inherit one chromosome from each of the 23 types from each parent. So the 46 chromosomes in our somatic cells are actually two sets of 23 chromosomes, a maternal set and a paternal set. Maternal set from my mum and paternal set from my dad. The number of chromosomes in a single set is represented by N. Any cell with two chromosome sets is called a diploid cell. And diploid cells has a diploid number of chromosomes and this can be abbreviated as 2N. For humans, the diploid number of chromosomes is 46 because 2N equals 46. This is the number of chromosomes in our somatic cells, body cells. But unlike somatic cells, gametes, so sperm and eggs, contain a single set of chromosomes. Such cells are called haploid cells, and haploid cells have a haploid number of chromosomes, which can be abbreviated as N. For humans, the haploid number is 23. This is a picture of a cell with a diploid number of 6. Remember, 2N means diploid number. This cell has undergone DNA replication. That's why you can see two sister chromatids. Remember that one of the sister chromatids is identical to the other one. The DNA we see here has also been tightly packaged into chromosomes because it's getting ready for cell division. In this picture, you can also see homologous pairs of chromosomes, where each homologous pair is made up of one chromosome from the maternal set in red, so maternal set is in red, and one chromosome from the paternal set in blue. How do I know which are the homologous chromosomes? Well, I look at their length, and if there were banding patterns, I'd look at that too. And if there were centromere positions, I'd look at that too. But here, it's very obvious that they're different lengths. So each maternal or paternal set is made up of three homologous pairs. The long homologous pair chromosomes, the medium length homologous pair chromosomes, and the short homologous pairs of chromosomes. Awesome, so you made it to the end of the video. By now, you should be able to describe the general structure of DNA. Describe chromosome structure in terms of sister chromatids and homologous pairs, and describe chromosome number in terms of haploid and diploid cells. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.